We're finally here, Sheldon. We are at the end of Total Madness. Let's get into it. I'm John Chidley Hill. And I am Sheldon Alexander. I'm here. I'm here, people. I'm here. <laughs> and this is You Killed It, the podcast about the challenge. Sheldon, how was your week? <laughs> I think, you know, in an interesting way, my week can be described as Total Madness. <laughs> Ooh. Pro right? level segue. Right? Uh, I. I don't even know where to begin, and I know that because we're in this episode where we're reviewing the part two of a reunion episode, obviously we have leeway to talk about whatever the heck we want, right? But, wow. I don't even know where to begin. I mean, the week... Do do I just get into this? Is this what what the people want? Is this what you want to hear? I think... I mean, I want to hear it. Just as background. (laughs) Okay. For our listeners... Yeah. who don't pay attention to everything that Sheldon and I do. Sheldon and I, mm-hmm. I'm going to speak in broad strokes, work <laughs> in sports journalism. Yes. So things are really heating up for us this weekend. Uh, off air, we were just discussing the fact that our hours are changing, mm-hmm. that a lot's going on. And Sheldon also has another podcast. He has several other podcasts. Mm-hmm. And they focus on the NBA. They focus on basketball. And so Sheldon on Wednesday night, was it, was uh, working on his other podcast. Tuesday night. Tuesday night, excuse me. Re- and recorded then, it on Tuesday, edited on Wednesday. And, and? wow. So <laughs> let's even take it a step back because this goes into like sleeping patterns, which is something you and I have talked about a lot just in terms of working days compared to working nights, right? And it's just different and it's just your body getting used to it. So in this whole return to work plan where we started going back into the office, we had to do a different rotation of shifts. So Sunday night and Monday night I worked and I've worked days since I've been on the show I work on now for five years. Show's been on for five years. Yeah. So I've been on days for five years and then I worked probably days a year before that on the old show that was on during the day. So six years in a straight, I've been working days. So in return to work now, coming off this quarantine, I worked Sunday night and Monday night. So again, NBA's back Tuesday. I'm like, all right, we're going to record our NBA uh, preview. Let's go. Let's do this. I'm hype. Record it. Everything's cool. I then save it and say, okay, I'm going to edit this on Wednesday. So I edit it together on Wednesday. Everything is great. I'm like, I'm feeling good about it. Everything's good. I'm right at the end. Literally the only thing I had left to do to this podcast was add the outro music. That's it. Just add 20 second music bed at the very end. And as I'm trying to do that, the computer crashes. Now, Mind you, I was using like an old MacBook I've had since like 2012, and I've been through wars with that MacBook. That MacBook did me great. Crashed, got a new hard drive. It was still living. It was it was hanging on by a thread, but it was still working. And in my mind, I thought, hey, I can hold on to this MacBook until Christmas, right? Get through the NBA season. I'll be fine. New MacBook, Christmas. No. <laughs> Crashes. <laughs> so not only does it crash, John... But when I bring it back up, the timeline that I just finished editing, and I know people might not be familiar with like that process and how that works, but I'm saying like editing, it's not like this pod where we're very conversational. We are on the other pod as well, but sometimes I got to like intro different segments and stuff and I'm not good. So I got to like edit that, right? When I brought back up that hour and a half podcast that was edited, my timeline was empty. It was gone. There's just nothing on the screen. (laughs) I would have cried. I I edit. I usually edit. You killed it. And if that happened to me, I would cry. I was so rattled. So in the moment, I'm freaking out because I don't know what to do. I'm like, uh, did I delete it by accident? Control Z, nothing. So now I'm just online trying to figure out, you know, because you can Google stuff, right? Like what happens if this stuff, you know, you can Google certain things. So I spend all night trying to do that because in my mind, I'm like, I cannot re-edit this whole thing. Like that's just not possible, right? So I finally figure that out. This is late Wednesday night. I figure that out, right? And 
No, I can't figure it out. I go to sleep Wednesday night because I give up. And I'm like, I got to wake up in the morning and record. You killed it. Thursday morning. So now I wake up at 4.30 a.m. on Thursday. Okay. And in my mind, I say, I'm going to try to recover this timeline again. But chances are I'm going to have to re-edit it. So I'm going to spend the morning re-editing before we record. You killed it. That's my plan. So I wake up. I figure out a way to retrieve my timeline. It works, but it takes a while to download back onto your system, right? As I'm doing that, I'm say, I said, perfect. I can watch you. I can watch the challenge right now. We'll record it. I'll just re-edit it after. So as I watched the challenge, which was a great episode, I enjoyed it, which we'll get to. My timeline pops back up. And I'm like, I'm running around my house. I'm like woofing it up. I'm so happy because the timeline's there. I can see it. I feel it. I feel the energy. Everything is great. I hit play and then I start watching. And then for some reason, after 10 minutes, my audio file corrupts and it's just gone. <laughs> so the rest of it is all there. The guy I do the pod with, Mr. Andrew Webster, his audio's fine. It's there, crystal clear. The video's there, everything. But for some reason, my audio is gone. So then when I go back into the computer to find it, to find my original audio, for some reason, the original audio file is also corrupted and just ends after 12 minutes. Don't know why that happened. Don't know how that happened. Now I'm insanely rattled again. That's when I messaged you yesterday in the morning to be like, hey, man, I'm having major issues here. <laughs> I'm not sure what we're going to be able to tape. But there's more to this story. I hope I'm keeping y'all entertained because there's a lot more here. So at that point, I'm trying to figure out, OK, how do I retrieve my audio? But there's a backup audio shot with the camera I use. So the problem with that is I now would have to go through, retrieve each single edit, and then input that audio back onto the timeline. For every time I made an edit, retrieve the audio from that video and do that for the whole hour and a half. So I start doing that, but then my computer keeps crashing. <laughs> so every 10 minutes, you'd, I'd be getting some work done, boom, crash. So I say, I, I've had enough of this. I'm going to the Apple store and the Apple store saved me before, right? Where, you know, you get, you do the diagnostics check, you find out what's wrong and normally, Hey, you just dump this file onto a hard drive and then dump it back on and then everything's fine. Like whatever it is. So I go to the Apple store. First thing I'll say, why the hell were people walking around in the mall? Just strolling. <laughs> Last I checked, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Everyone's wearing masks and all that, which was cool. Shout out to people wearing the mask. People were following rules in the mall. But why are you just walking around the mall? I, I don't get it. If I did not have to be in the mall, there's not a chance I'd be in the mall. <laughs> not a chance. Nope. So I sit there. I line up. It takes about two hours for me to get seen by someone in the Apple store. Go in. The guy runs a check on my MacBook and he says, yo, man, your hard drive's done. It's done. So you can either get a new hard drive or you can just get a new MacBook. I It's pretty old. Are you, he's like, I look at this. I see that you've already replaced a hard drive three years ago. So do you want to spend another 250 bucks to redo the hard drive or just give up and maybe look into getting a new MacBook? So at this point, I'm depressed because I got a tape. You killed it. I still haven't put out the NBA preview episode and the NBA season starts in like 12 hours from when I'm doing this, right? So I got nothing here. I'm just struggling. And I'm like, I just need to edit this right now. So then I say to myself, I'm just going to bite the bullet. I need to buy the MacBook. I'm going to buy a MacBook right now. John, I am in the Apple store. I'm going to buy the MacBook and I'm looking around for someone to help me. And then uh, one of the, the people come to me finally, and she's like, hey, uh, was someone helping you? I'm like, yeah, I was at the Genius Bar. I was getting my MacBook looked at. It's broken, so I'm just going to buy a new MacBook. And she's like, oh, I'm sorry, but uh, you got to book an appointment. I'm like, what? What do, you, what do you mean book an appointment? I'm in the store right now. And she's like, no, because of the COVID rules, everything's on a schedule. So it's one employee for one uh customer 
So all the sales, all the transactions, it's all scheduled. So let me look it up. She opens up her thing and she's like, I could probably fit you in in maybe like a half hour or so. <laughs> Again, I've been up since 4.30 in the morning. I do not want to be waiting around in the mall for another half hour. So she mentions to me, you can go online and you can order it online and then come back and pick it up. Then she mentions that there's some like discount going and uh, which I kind of pay attention to, but not really. So then I just leave. I'm like, you know what? I'm over this. I'm going home, packing it in for the day. I'm just going to go home. I'm going to watch basketball. I'm going to try to edit as much as I can this NBA preview while my computer crashes every 10 minutes and just see how far along I can get if I can finally get it done. Are you, are you with me here? Am, am I boring yeah. you, John? No. Am I boring you here? I'm, I'm, I apologize for a long-winded story, but this has been my last week. So <laughs> I get back home. I go online because she told me, she did mention, hey, if you go to this website, you can get a MacBook, right? And it'll be a, a little bit of a discount for back to school. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Turns out I made the right decision by not buying it in there. Like they inadvertently saved me because when I went online, there's a deal going on for back to school where if you just like click a link saying that you're a teacher or you're a student and you just click on this link, you get $250 off of a MacBook. Now, awesome. $250 is a lot of money. So I'm like, all right, cool. While I'm also doing that, a link pops up saying that, you can trade in your current MacBook. So you just type in all the information, boom, another 250 another $260 saved by trading in my prior MacBook. Oh, and the back to school special, you also get a pair of free AirPods. Nice. So inadvertently in all this craziness, that was a dub. So I'm at home, I'm typing all this in, I'm ordering it online. I ordered the MacBook, I got to pick it up today as in friday when we're taping this i had to pick it up at noon but i'm uh, as i'm still watching nba fans crazy first night of the nba so good so i'm watching i'm enjoying i'm still editing my computer's crashing but i know i got a new computer coming to me tomorrow so i'm kind of happy everything's cool finally i finish editing the preview podcast i was Ooh. basically up for 24 hours getting this done but it was done, and it was the final piece of content edited on that MacBook, which I bought a long time ago while I was I didn't have a new job yet. I was in between jobs. No, I was switching right. from one company to the next, and I bought a MacBook. And I remember being so stressed out about spending so much money on it because I didn't have a job yet. And instead, do you know what I did with that MacBook? I figured stuff out. I figured out how to cut things. I figured out how to do videos. I figured out how to you know do graphics how to do all these things and i made that money back that's why it was so important for me because i know there's someone like well why did you continue doing that why didn't you just stop no 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 it was important to me to finish that last final project on that macbook because it was such an important part of my life of my career we've been everywhere with that macbook put in mega work this podcast was done on this Mac, on that MacBook, so yep. much went into that. So in my mind, I'm like, no, it's gonna finish this story. I need to finish the podcast <laughs> on that MacBook. So finally, go to bed around like 4 a.m. So again, I was up for 24 hours. Send out the podcast. Wake up in the morning. My alarm goes off, and new me, new podcast. Alarm goes off for what? A Friday morning workout in the park. Oh my God, Sheldon. Everything is just, hey, new me. New me, everything is going good. Everything's feeling good. Up early. Met my boys. You know Daryl and Abir. Yep. Met them at the park. Had the workout in the morning. They're like laughing. They're like, dude, you're crazy. I'm like, hey, man. I need, I have all this like worked up, pent up energy. Let's just, let's do this. Let's get it, get it shout done. Out, shout out to Daryl and Abir. Yes. Finish the workout. Go pick up my MacBook. Right. And shout to the lady who was helping me out because she was like super quick with it. And the other part of all these Apple products is you can't plug anything in. So you got to get mad adapters now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Like, you can't put in USB cables, you can't put in HDMI cords, everything's an adapter. So, I would have had to pick up my MacBook and then line up again to get the adapters so that we could do this podcast right now. But the lovely lady that was in the front of the line, (laughs) she felt pity on me. And she was like, don't worry, wait here, I'll go in the store, get it for you, and you could just pay for it right here. So God bless that woman who maybe, even though she couldn't see my full face because of the mask, (laughs) she could see my eyes. She could see the tiredness in my eyes and the sadness that, oh, you pick up your MacBook, but if you need to get these other plugs, you have to line up in that line over there (laughs) to get it. So thank you to that woman who finally did that for me. And then, because I really needed to make myself feel way better, John. I decided that I was going to get my new iPhone as well because my phone's been dead for a while. As you know, I've gone through three different iPhone chargers during quarantine because my phone is dead and just sucks. So I'm sitting in the mall and I'm like, you know what? Screw this. We're making this a day. I'm upgrading my phone. I'm getting a new phone as well. So I turned this crappy ass week into a new MacBook some new iPods or AirPods, whatever they're called, the fancy ones that don't have the cords anymore, a new iPhone, a bunch of cords that I need for stuff because the Raptors start tomorrow and it's a big game against the Lakers, so I need these cords so I could do that podcast. I needed those cords so I could do this podcast with you. And you know what? To round this all out, I did this all because my birthday is on Monday. And happy birthday to me. If I can't treat myself after that week, hey, when can I ever treat myself? So here we are. I apologize for everyone who listened to that long-winded story. But I feel like if you are in on this podcast, you are invested in John and myself and what's going on in our lives and the crazy week that we have from time to time to bring you the goodness that is that you killed it podcast. And I killed my I killed my old computer. It got killed. Yeah. Not to complain compared to that, but like the podcast has taken its toll on my computer as well. I get a lot. I get an increasing number of warning messages every week when I edit. You killed it. All this is to say that what you did, Sheldon, was you turned around a shitty week and you turned it into a good day. Yeah. Just like the editors and producers of the challenge turned around from a shitty episode last week to a really good, fun episode. You and I spoke briefly on the phone when you were in your Uber to get to the mall to sort yep. out your issues. Yeah, day and one said, spent like, at the mall. Yeah, day one, <laughs> should have, you should have gotten a tent and set up. But <laughs> you asked me, because clearly it was on your mind, like, should we even bother doing this podcast episode? Yeah. And you're like, quick question, John, like, did you like this episode? And my answer was yes. I liked mm-hmm. this episode way more than the reunion. I guess this is really a shit they should have shown episode. Essentially, it was more. It was more like that because it wasn't. It wasn't like the Brady Bunch style. It wasn't them yeah, like yeah, responding yeah, yeah. to what each other was saying. It was sort of like they clearly would interview one person and then show another person the interview or say like, "Oh, like Anissa said this, Jenna, Jenna, Ani-, whatever." Um, but this is way better, and honestly, I would have preferred if last week and this week was like this format. What did you think? So I enjoyed it a lot, and I think um, the thing I thought of initially, and I don't know if this is because of <laughs> the week I had editing, <laughs> but initially when I saw it, I wondered if they were able to do this because they just had time. Like, I wonder if this was their plan for both reunions, but they just didn't have time. Because here's the thing that uh, people might not realize. To put together that that last episode, and you probably have, I don't know, four hours of footage of all these people on all these different Zooms. So now you're sifting through that to get the best reactions to the shit they should have shown. That takes a while. And so to put that episode together, I bet you the person that did that had like they had that going for a while. You know what I mean? And so they just had time 
And then when you have time, you can produce better content. Vern looked like he was in good spirits. I didn't even realize that Vern was a challenge super fan. And that was kind of his credentials for hosting this. I, I didn't realize that. But it makes sense. It made a little more sense than it did last week when Vern was hosting. Um, Vern seemed more upbeat. Their reaction seemed good. I was in on it. It had a better pacing to it. He still was a little slow. He was still clearly reading from teleprompters. Although, your friend and mine, mm -hmm. Lawrence, reached out and yes. told us to leave Vern alone. Yes, he I saw him that at we work. Were too hard on Vern. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I saw him at work for the first time. I saw him at work, obviously, for the first time in like four months because I haven't been into the office, although they have been. But. We talked about the challenge extensively, and he actually said that you were way too hard on Vern. <laughs> that was the message that was delivered to me. <laughs> I'm just you saying. You know what, though? I'm just a messenger. I'm just a messenger. You know what? I stand by my chirps. <laughs> you got it. You can't back down from a chirp. I don't think I crossed any lines. No. Nope. So I stand nope. by it. He it's bad. Sorry, LT. Um, <laughs> One thing that I thought was interesting, and this is one of the, they, I'm just going to say, for the sake of our listeners, we're not going to talk about every single thing that they covered on no. this episode. Just because, like, they would, like, flash to, like, I don't know, something dumb Nelson did for, mm -hmm. like, 30 seconds, and we're not going to get into the nitty gritty. No. But one thing that they spoke about sort of at length, and that I thought was interesting, was they spoke about how hard it was to live in the bunker. Yes. And how it was so psychologically challenging. They looked at Corey and Bailey in particular had um, panic, attacks. panic attacks, anxiety issues. But they also said, like, the air was bad. The washrooms got ruined immediately, pretty much. They had, like, different waves of porta potties, which Kayla and Bear may or may not have made best use of. <laughs> um, and. I don't think, I mean, the the cast members were saying they didn't. They were saying they did not enjoy that experience, but they didn't it, say that it was bad. And I was wondering, what did you think of the bunker, as opposed to the usual sort of posh mansion? I thought it was horrible. I thought it was horrible really? because here's the thing, right? Like, I get what you're trying to do, right? You're trying to make it a different experience because that experience will breed content. Right. Like if they're struggling, if they're, um, you know, having not a bad time, but, you know, adding more stress to the situation adds more content. And I yeah. get that. But I think if I'm adding another character, because you got to think of the house as another character on mm -hmm. the show. How much more do you get out of the pool scenes? How much more do you get out of, you know, again, the big mansions with the big bathrooms that people are running around the house and trying to find places to hide so they can do their business, right? Instead of the flip side where now you have this dingy house and now it's making everyone kind of more depressed. And that's not really entertaining. Like, we get it to a point, but we don't really want to watch people be depressed over and over again on the challenge, Right? Like, it's not that kind of show. We want the fun. We want the pool parties. We want the toga parties. We want all these different things, right? The upbeat. We want that to, to occur. So I think that was a part that was kind of weird uh, just with the bunker. And the thing that caught me off guard, John, was the porta potty situation. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize how bad I, the bathrooms were. That's I, horrible. I'd read about it, and I'd read that exactly what they described, that a lot of the guys were peeing in the shower or the sinks and at first i'm like that's gross and then like it became clear that they weren't even like rinsing it like not that it's yeah, acceptable under any either way yeah 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 but like if you're going to do it like run some water over where you were like my god that's, that's disgusting. disgusting and some of them anisa said didn't have shower shoes yeah like also holy. like none of that makes sense right like that's not even living conditions and trust me i am super far from someone who needs to be babied or someone who's like posh or whatever right like i'll sleep on the floor right like i don't i'm yeah. not i'm not that guy you know but 
you have to pee in the sink? Like, that's disgusting. That's absolutely disgusting. I can't even fathom that that was a thing in real life for something that we're known to have such a high production quality to it as a challenge. I'm surprised more people didn't complain. And maybe they did behind the scenes, right? Yeah. But that's disgusting. That said, I disagree. I liked the bunker. Like, think really? of some of the, okay. Think of some of the big arguments we had. Mm-hmm. Some of the big scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Casey and Bailey, their big fight. Uh, Jordan and Wes and their big fight. Okay. Uh, there's another one. Uh, Kayla and Bear and their relationship, which, yep. like, Kayla straight up said was in part because she was bored, right? Like, that's what <laughs> yes. she said last episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't necessarily have those things happening if it's not for the bunker. I don't know, though. I think, like, there's still fights normally every season. That's true. Right? There's that, fights at the pool. <laughs> there's I, fights all the time. I do hear you that it, um, the lack of a pool and like separate bathrooms where you could go hook up hurt the romantic sexual side of things. Like to the best of our knowledge, mm-hmm. aside from Bear and Kayla making out, well, and it turns out all the I women mean, made out. Yeah, which uh, we'll get to. Yeah, we'll get to. But aside from <laughs> D and Rogan having sex in the shower. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone hooked up. Am I missing anything? I don't think so. Like, I don't remember them showing anything really like, was it a Saf and uh, Nani making out on the first night? Yeah, they made out. Yeah, But like, nothing extreme that we're, we're used to seeing on the challenge. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just found it super weird. Like, even just think of the happy pool scenes, people sun tanning, like people playing basketball in the pool. Like, it just, you know, it's happy. It's like a happy place to be. Whereas the bunker wasn't. But mm-hmm. I get it. And you add in the sanitary stuff, that's gross. Um, yeah, the panic attacks, that's not good. But you know what it did remind me of? Because they were talking about the panic attacks and how difficult it was to breathe. I think on this pod, I talked about, I guess, the last trip I would have went on before everything shut down was Super Bowl weekend. We did a ski trip to Breckenridge. Breckenridge? Yeah. Breckenridge, Colorado. And I was saying like how difficult it was for me to breathe. And I was thinking it's just because I'm supremely out of shape. Until I'm seeing some of my other friends who I know are in shape and they would get to the top of the stairs and they would be like, oh shit, like I can't breathe. Like it's, it's just super odd. Right. So when Corey was talking about how he was having trouble breathing, it reminded me of that trip. And to the point where I couldn't sleep at night, like I was going to say something that, you know what, just because of the wave of the the podcast, um, there are a couple nights where like I fell asleep because I was really drunk. But when that wasn't the case, I was having trouble falling asleep. And so the last night I slept in the living room on the couch because I was right underneath the window just so that like fresh air was right in my face the whole night. And that was the only way I was able to fall asleep. So I couldn't imagine being in that bunker for how long does it take to film that show? They were there for like two months. That's in. I, I couldn't fathom that. Couldn't fathom it. That'd be horrible. Um, The next thing was that (laughs) we looked at Melissa and Josh's relationship, which was they'd sort of alluded to a closeness between them. See, I missed that. I totally missed that. This caught me off guard. Well, just just because um, when Melissa and Josh had their falling out, Mm -hmm. They were talking that they had been close. They didn't say like romantically or sexually, but they'd been yeah, they'd been close, and like that was the first time we'd really known them to be close. So I was like, "Where's mm-hmm. this coming from?" And also, when you look at Josh and like his track record, <laughs> he always gets into these like one-sided crushes, where like yeah. he's always in that best friend role. Yeah, Josh on the challenge. We've talked about this before, right? He's permanently in the friend zone. Right, like he owns a challenge friend zone, (laughs) and it's because it was Georgia, and there's someone else. Because even Nani too, right? There was a moment where he tried to make a run at Nani. There's Nani, and there was Georgia, and those are the two big ones. There's a 
third one though? Yeah, probably. I mean, to be honest, I do what I can to try to like remove Josh from my memory, but it was just the exact same thing again. And I mean, he, he was trying to shoot a shot with Melissa and it's super interesting to think about Melissa's Melissa's season on the challenge. I was trying to think of, I was choosing my words very wisely. It was interesting to think of Melissa, because if you know now in the context of her being pregnant, you know, how are like mood swings, right? How are your hormones? How are like all these things? Like how are all these things affecting you? Just your mind state. Then add in, as we just discussed, the bunker and how crazy that is. So... The Josh thing was weird to me, but also clearly from what we saw in this episode, Melissa was just about that life this season, just having a she good was time. Enjoying herself. Also, imagine like pregnant women have to pee all the time because mm-hmm. like their bladder is slowly being squished, right? Yeah. So like, imagine how often she had to go to the porta potty in the freezing cold. Oh, it's so like, bad. Just brutal. What I couldn't get over in this, like, conversation was that she was like, oh, yeah, I didn't even remember kissing Josh. Like, first of all, (laughs) ouch. Second of all, then they're like, how is Josh as a kisser? And she's like, oh, I don't want to be mean. Negative two. (laughs) What did she think would be mean? Like, if negative two is not mean, what is mean? What's it? Negative two is nice? Hold on, but it's not even that, right? So she's like laughing. She didn't even really remember it. She said it's not that good. She doesn't want to be mean. But then she proceeds to give details. And I'm going to say this. This is great producering because you know that she probably hesitated and then they kept going and going and please describe it. And they're probably started laughing, joking around. But hey, it doesn't matter because now I got the goods. Now I got my footage. So she says, I wrote this down. It was just sloppy. He's a clumsy kisser. She also says it was good that Kyle was there to pull her away from Josh. (laughs) I'm like, yo, Josh, poor guy, man. Like, when you go back home to your boys, when you go back home to your family, what are they saying to you, (laughs) right? When you're repeatedly just getting clowned on national TV every single season. It's not a good look. Josh is going to be on this upcoming season of Big Brother, right? Like he's on Big Brother All Stars. Yeah, or whatever it is. I've I've heard that, and I normally do watch Big Brother, but I doubt I'm going to watch this season because like basketball's on. Like there's but, a lot of stuff on. But like, if you're Josh at this point, why are you going back on national TV when you're getting dunked on this hard? Like, there comes think- a point where like you're tired of being on the wrong side of the poster. You know what I mean? Nah, because Josh, you can tell, right? You can tell, especially from his behavior in these reunion shows, that everything he does when he's on the show is just fake. Because in the reunion shows, everything, he's calm, he's cool. It's like it's a different person, right? Where Mm -hmm. now you, you know, and we've alluded to this before, and I get reminded of it every reunion because he's way calmer. He's talking in a different tone. He does not have the same energy right? that he did multiple times throughout the season. And so now you can see it's like it's his job, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why he's going to go on Big Brother because he's going to keep going on Big Brother for as long as he can because that's his job now. Okay. That's what I think. I don't know. That makes a certain amount of sense. Uh, But Melissa was not Mm -hmm. done with Josh and maybe Kyle. And I say that, by the way, Mm -hmm. without any judgment. In fact, I'm proud of Melissa and I'm envious of the good time she had. Hey, get yours. Everybody in the house, get yours, have fun, have a good time. And hey, maybe she knew there's only going to be a couple more opportunities before the, well, subconsciously. Maybe she knew, you know. Let me have this fun now because who knows what's going to happen when I get back. So she and Nani apparently had an ongoing thing. And as Kyle says in like the interview, first Mm -hmm. of all, why didn't they show this during the season? Second of all, for all the rumors about her and Kyle and apparently like maybe one kiss with Josh. Mm hmm. Like, this is where the action was for her and Nani. Like, this is more than Nani had with Casey. This mm-hmm. is more than Melissa had with either Kyle or Josh. 
So I'm not saying this is like a horny dude. I'm just saying like this was the most substantive hookup for either or, Melissa or Nani. Or it makes you wonder what didn't they show us between Kyle and Melissa or between Nani and Casey. Oh, fair, fair. Good right? Morning. I don't know. I don't know. But I'll be honest. Like, let's be serious for a second here, right? I have a couple questions. Where were the dudes when all this was going on? Because they said they started off playing Truth or Dare and then the boys all left. And then the girls were just bored and, you know. I I can only I can only hope that the guys were all making out themselves. <laughs> I mean, hey, who knows? Fair right? is fair. Who right? knows? Fair is fair. Fair is fair. Everyone um, gets a girlfriend and a boyfriend, right? That's how this works. I just thought it was a great. It was <laughs> funny, like the shit they should have shown. Normally, it disappoints, right? Yeah, I feel like for this. the past how many? I was like, hold on, where was this scene? Like, let's let's be serious, and we don't do this a lot on this podcast, right? But let's not beat around the bush. Melissa and Nani are two very, very, very attractive women. And when that, because that came out of nowhere, like I don't even know if I remembered seeing them in scenes where they were talking to each other in this house. Then when they're showing Anissa and Jenny, I was like, okay, like, wait, what? <laughs> like, it seems like there's more storylines there that they might have been able to dig into. And even when you lost all the D stuff, you still didn't have room for this? <laughs> I guess all that happened before the D stuff, and they couldn't go back in time. Like, Nani would have already... No, Nani would have still been in the house because... Yeah, Casey... Nani was still there. Yeah. Hey, I don't know. all I'm saying is you could have found a way. <laughs> could have found a way. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Uh but also, another weird thing. Sorry, hold on, so, hold on. Before we move on, though, before we move on, I would just like to emphasize. No, 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 no. I, I just want to emphasize something because we, we touched on it before what, when it was happening and Nani was being Nani. But I just need to reemphasize. Nani is a champ. Like, we talk about five tool players, right, in the challenge mm -hmm. and, you know, people who are able to win challenges, also have fun in the house, also yell at people, cause drama, get in fights, all that stuff, right? Nani, for what she does, right, like, let's say if we were to equate hooking up to being a three-point shooter, Nani is Steph Curry, right? Think of the work that Nani did in this season alone. If you're talking about Melissa... You're talking about Casey. You're talking Asaf. about Asaf. Like, quick, quick work. And no? they're all very attractive people. Are we forgetting someone, too? Wasn't there someone else? Or was it because Asaf left? Jay? No. I feel like we're forgetting someone else. Yeah. But either way, the point remains. Nani is a champ. <laughs> and, yeah. oh, you're going to say her the line of the episode. It's all yeah. right. We'll save. We could save that. That's fine. No, I'm gonna say right now. My okay. line of the episode. Yep. Is Nani saying Melissa's baby might be mine? I mean, hey. Ball don't lie. Shouts to the champ, Nani. Also, Kyle saying, "Why the hell was that deleted?" Speaking for everyone. Yeah. Now, please forgive me for bringing this up, Sheldon. Okay. Nelson and Angela. <laughs> I guess this is going to be our final say something nice about Nelson. Okay. I don't even think we did it the last few episodes. Uh, well, he was off the final. Oh, yeah, he got he kicked off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. He got kicked off. Uh, and then, like, I don't... No, last week. We, it's a week. We didn't really bag on him. But... Uh, this Nelson and Angela situation. So essentially, mm -hmm. he had the same drama that Jenna and Zach had. Yeah. But it all boiled down to a fan rumor that Angela saw mm -hmm. from a Twitter account. And like, listen, you know, this is a more progressive age and we don't judge people based off of shallow things. But I'm just saying... If your Twitter handle ends in an underscore, 
by definition, I don't believe anything you're saying. And Angela <laughs> was believing. I can't even remember what the Twitter account was, but it's some uh, Twitter account that ends uh, with an underscore. And that's just like, <laughs> that's like the trademark of fake news. Like that's, that's pretty good. That's a guarantee that like it's bullshit. That's pretty good. And Angela fell for it. So what, what did Angela see? So what Angela that thought set her off. Angela thought that Nelson and D had something going on. There's a rumor that Nelson and D hooked up. And I mean, who knows? They didn't show anything remotely close to that, but also they cut out a lot of D. So I don't know. But I will say Nelson seemed contrite. Like he seemed, you know, honest about about it. Like he seemed you know, like nothing really happened and nobody else really commented on it. So maybe it didn't I, happen. I genuinely believe that Nelson was faithful to Angela on this season of the challenge. He does not have a great track record, mm-hmm. but there was zero indication. No one has suggested otherwise, yeah. friend or enemy. And let's be honest, Nelson has a lot of enemies in the house. Yeah. Like there are a lot of people like if, are you telling me if Smashly? Yeah, someone could, would leak that. She would have aired him out, mm-hmm. right? Kayla, Anissa. Like, there's people in that house that do not like Nelson that would have aired him out. For sure. Even, not that Corey would have, like, thrown him under the bus, but Corey's also not going to take bullets for Nelson on that sort of behavior at this stage in their friendship, right? No. Nelson would, Corey would say, like, yeah. Nelson and so and so got a little closer than they should have. He would have like put it that way. Mm -hmm. I I thought Nelson was, from what we saw, reasonable, both like in the interviews and when he was dealing with Angela, and like yeah, pretty calm and like you say, contrite and like disappointed that their relationship had come to a close. Yeah, I mean, I also think that he, in him saying that their relationship is over now, like he could just admit something happened yeah right he also he defended angela on twitter this week okay where he basically told fans of his which would be like what five people (laughs) uh to not like harass angela and that like breakups happen and that he like likes and respects her and wishes her well and no one should be attacking her at this point okay so you know Classy for a guy who in the past has really been disrespectful of women, at least in this instance, he was he was doing better. Yeah, I mean it's it's it was interesting to see because you know our viewpoint of Nelson obviously was a roller coaster ride, and as mentioned at the very end of it, it wasn't all good and it wasn't all bad, but that was kind of Nelson. So it was funny to see him in that in this light where he was talking about his relationship, which was something that didn't really make the show at all. No. So, you know, you kind of wonder, maybe would it have been a storyline if D was someone they were talking about? Because, uh, you know, having Angela call and cry on his birthday and accuse him of cheating seems like something that would normally be in an episode. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. Speaking of relationships that were on the rocks, yep, we re-examined the Zach and Jenna thing this time minus Zach, and yeah, uh, I mean maybe maybe you went too hard on Vernon Davis last episode, <laughs> but we probably could have been harder on Zach last last episode for his whole behavior during well, the reunion and oh yeah yeah. And like, here's the thing though. Jenna says, Jenna Mm -hmm. actually said, Zach has every right to be mad. Like, with what he found on the internet, he has a right to what he found on her IG, he should have been mad about it. Now, I don't know what that, I'm just going by what she said. And, you know, does Jenna kind of have a tendency to let him like I'm talking publicly because obviously we don't know what their real relationships like. We're going off what we see on TV. Right. And what we see is a lot of Jenna making excuses for Zach's bullshit behavior. So yeah. I don't know if she's being which genuine she or not, a, which she does a lot of. She mm-hmm. often makes excuses for Zach. Yeah. 
so the interesting thing here to me was so Corey posted a confused pic and the internet goes crazy right yeah so the internet thinks that it's Corey. so Corey says he just wants us to make it very clear that it's not him that was dming jenna but he knows who it is yeah so do you like if we're getting our investigators on here investigative journalism or investigative journalists i can't speak i haven't slept in like three days okay um (laughs) but if you were if you were trying to figure out who this was who are your prime suspects do you have any idea i mean because i have one very good idea really go ahead yeah go ahead go ahead i was gonna say in my mind the Mm -hmm. top suspects would be members of the Young Bucks or Young Buck Jace, like Devin. Okay. Uh, however, I'm not convinced of that. And I'm very reluctant to answer because I imagine that when it comes to who's got the tea, who's got that hot goss in the world of the challenge cast, Okay. I imagine Corey has his finger on the pulse. Mm-hmm. And I say this because... I think Corey's very popular. And it, okay. the way he comes across on TV, I can imagine Corey having a lot of conversations with a lot of people when the show's done. Like, you know how Smashly says, like, when she's not on the show, she basically does not speak to people? Yeah. I could see Corey talking, being the opposite and talking to everyone. Hmm. And just like commenting. DMing, not necessarily like like not DMing to hit on them. Uh, I think he's quite loyal to Taylor. Okay, but like, I bet he knows a lot of what's going on just because like he's he's talking to everyone all the time because he's on it, he's basically on good terms with everyone. He even gets a, along with his enemies like Johnny Bananas, right? It's interesting. It's interesting. So hold on, you're saying that. You believe that Corey does know who it is, but it's not Corey? Yeah, I believe that it's not Corey. Okay. And I believe him that he knows who it is. Okay. Because I think I think he's I think he would be well positioned to know everything that's going on. Because like he gets along with the Lavender Ladies. He gets True. along with obviously Nelson and Hunter. He gets along I mean, basically, he gets along well with everyone except for Zach, it seems. <laughs> yes. Right? Like, he gets along with CT. He gets along with the Big Brother people. He, right? Like, there's no one. He is Switzerland. He, he is just, like, Mr. Popularity in a lot of respects. What is the reason for him and Zach? Is it a Jenna thing? Like, why don't him and Zach get along? Was it just Zach was... Uh, positioned with bananas when when Corey was going at them? I think that's part of it, but I also think that Corey would not stand for, or would not like the way Zach treats Jenna. And he even said that on this episode where he was like, the reason why I posted that picture was like, two months ago, they were on the verge of breakup and he was yeah. demanding that she come back from the Czech Republic. Mm-hmm. And he also made the point that if the she was on the other foot and Zach was in the challenge house and Jenna was back home and found some incriminating evidence, that Jenna would not force Zach to leave. Yeah. No, for sure. And, and so I think that Corey dislikes the way Zach speaks to to and about Jenna and probably like women in general on top of their own like like I I totally forgot too that Jenna and Corey were both on the same season of Real World right yeah, like that's like their introduction yeah so that's something that I kind of forgot about as well and I don't remember anything happening with them on that season like Corey was pretty busy with his own <laughs> drama with that his own season situation? for sure but the person who I do think it is, if we remember, on that same season. So remember, Corey was hooking up with the girl. Was her name Jenny or yes. Jamie? What was her name? No, it was Jenny. Jenny. So and then the exes come in, and then one of the exes, like Jenna, was one of the exes of the other guy Jay. But then Jenny's ex was a guy named Brian. 
Yeah. And wasn't Brian one season, didn't he come on the challenge, but he became like homeless or something? No. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Bruno. Bruno, sorry. Who so was sorry. On, he was on a different season of Real okay. World, but it was Corey was on Explosion. Bruno was on um, Skeletons. Bruno was on Skeletons, yes. So, anyways, still follow me here on the point. So, Jenna and Corey go back, right? They go way back. But remember the whole thing happened with Bruno, the one season where there was a rumor that something happened with jenna and him on the plane or something Mm -hmm. and it kind of blew up mid-season yep and then it kind of just died off but it kind of seemed like something really went on but we never really got the full story Mm -hmm. so to me i think that that would make sense that it was bruno messaging her and then zach sees that and then that's why zach gets super mad because he already knows that this was a thing before and my guy's still trying to shoot a shot after the fact so that would also lead to why jenna would be like hey whatever whatever what zach did see he has a right to be mad about Hmm. just my theory it's not based on anything i didn't see it online i didn't whatever i was just like hmm i wonder if it's that dude so moving on to another relationship, <laughs> we got Bailey and Swaggy, who were married for two years and kept it hidden. Yeah. First of all, she was wearing a wedding band in the bunker. So like, I didn't know enough. I just assumed that they were married. I assumed they were married too, but that was because I wasn't really paying attention to it. Like... I remembered, I think I talked about it before on the pod, how now I don't find them as annoying. Like, I don't think they were as annoying on the challenge. Like, I didn't mind either of them on the challenge, to be honest. But on Big Brother, I found them super annoying on Big Brother. And what was even more annoying, besides the fact that Swaggy C was walking around with a shirt all all the time on Big Brother that said Swaggy C on it, but... They didn't even make it that far on Big Brother. And then on the finale of Big Brother, which if you watch that show, it's a big deal, right? Like someone wins, what is it, a million dollars or half a million dollars? Like most of the show is based on who the final two people are and then who the jury is voting for. Now, Swaggy got eliminated way before making the jury and Bailey was in the jury house, right? They decided that they were going to make the finale about them, and he proposes in the middle of the finale, and it was just kind of like, okay, you guys are just hijacking this, this is annoying, whatever. So that happened that long ago, so I just assumed that they'd been married by now. So I didn't even really care for their reveal. I found it weird. I, yeah, I found found it weird that, A, they felt it necessary to hide the fact that they were married for two years. It's just weird. Second of all, I find the assumption that anyone cares weird. And by that I mean, like, listen, Hmm. I am in favor of people falling in love and being happy. And I sincerely wish Swaggy and Bailey all the best. But whatever form that takes, I don't particularly care. Like, if they're common law, if they're in an open relationship... If they're married, like however they decide the shape that happiness takes. Yeah. That's their business. And I don't give a shit, you know, and like it's weird to me that they would think anyone would care. No, it was just weird to me that you would make this like public proclamation about getting engaged, but then hide your marriage. That's just weird. That was it. Yeah. It's so strange. And like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand the thinking. I can understand, like, being reluctant to wear your rings to the challenge house, not because it would make you a target, but because it would, like, you just don't want your to, like, have the diamond pop out of your engagement ring. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. for safety of your property, I can understand that. But it's not like they were hiding the fact they're a couple. First of all, everyone mm-hmm. knew they're a couple. Second of all, 
they had a blanket covered in photos of them. Like if anything, <laughs> if Forgot anything, about that. that blanket is more of a binding contract than the, their actual marriage. <laughs> That's funny. Right? Well played. So like, well played. What are they doing? I don't get it. Um... Do we want to talk about Swaggy and Nelson's fight? I don't particularly want to, unless you've got a burning. No, to. not really. I just found it weird. Uh, and Big T, it was just funny seeing her go to the hospital again because it was just a funny scene. But there's not really much to add to that other than her Fresh just screaming. Fresh pads. <laughs> oh, my favorite line. One of my favorite lines of the whole season. But also just her yelling, "Where's my wig? Where's my wig?" She didn't want to go to the hospital without her wig or heels. I just thought that was hilarious. Uh, yeah, the Nelson and Swaggy fight, it just seemed weird. Like, the only thing that stuck out to me about that was the producer. She wasn't afraid to get in the middle of that and try to break it up. Why? Because she, just like us sitting at home, knows that these two dudes really don't want to fight. No. <laughs> so, at first, I was like, oh, she's right in the middle of it. But it's like, of course she is, because she knows they don't really want to fight. And this is just ruining... This is just added work that they gotta watch now to not put in an episode because it means nothing <laughs> um we did look at uh kayla and sort of circled back to kayla and bear and her ex mikey yeah and i actually found this really interesting uh and i want to okay. give credit to kayla mm -hmm. who i thought came off as so Uh, accountable for her mm -hmm. own actions. Yeah. Like, she did say that, like, things came to light. She, I liked, I was interested when she said, you know, that was painful watching it back to see where she was in her life at that point. Yeah. Which I, I imagine, like, imagine going through the end of what to that point had been the longest relationship of your life and seeing it go down like that again and like but she also didn't shy away from taking responsibility for her actions mm -hmm. she did say some things came to light that made her feel like it was justified and i thought she was uh interesting when she said i wanted him to know but i couldn't be the one to tell him yeah Which i think is a very human situation where you're like ah, i should end this relationship but i don't have the courage to face the music myself. Yeah. Obviously, it's preferable to do it yourself. But mm -hmm. it's relatable that she was like, ah, like, I don't want to have this conversation. Yeah. Um, it's also interesting that Nani said, after the fact, that she thought Kayla did the right thing. Yeah. Which, well, I mean, I don't know that it, she went we don't about know. the right way. The weird like, we don't know what we don't know. Yeah, the weird thing about this whole section, though, was because they kept alluding to, oh, there was a lot more going on behind the scenes that nobody knows about, to which kind of made me mad because it's like, well, then don't talk about it. That was kind of my takeaway from it. I was just like, OK, then stop talking about this, because like the more you keep talking about it without telling us what's actually going on makes this narrative pointless. Yeah. Um, also pointless was i was gonna i was trying to make a segue to make fun of josh <laughs> but i was gonna say also pointless is josh but actually he was quite funny on this bus thing because and i mean funny in terms of us laughing at him puking on the bus and having three or four drinks and saying that the booze is real out here now I'm not here to condone over drinking or getting blackout drunk or drinking, you know, uh, drink till you throw up. Who was that? Oh, that was a, the big timers. Right. That's a big timers. Yeah. Drink till you throw We're up. We're going to drink until we throw up. So <laughs> a solid singing there, by the way. Thank um, you. But <laughs> not my first time singing that, Sheldon. <laughs> my. <laughs> I just didn't understand this again. Again, like, what kind of look is this, Josh? Like, what, what, what's your MO here? That's my question, I guess. What is your MO? Who is watching this that you are expecting to be like, yes, I like Josh. I'm rooting for that guy. That's all I'm saying. I don't get I also, it. 
I'm not going to shame anyone for not being able to hold their liquor. No. I'm just going to say that is biologically surprising mm-hmm. that someone of Josh's size mm-hmm. was that drunk after four drinks. Here's here's what I will say too, and you know we're saying we're not going to shame people, but I'm going to s- say this: if you're a grown ass person and you still don't know your limit, come on, man. But also to the grown ass person, because he said on that day, "Oh, I'm going to get fucked up today," or "I'm going to get blackout today," or whatever he said when they're at the castle, it just seems like a weird flex. But hey, whatever. Um, it, it is a weird flex, and also. I mean, maybe it comes with experience, but, like, you got to learn how to take your foot off the gas but still have a good time when you're drinking. Yeah. Yeah. Same. It's like, figure it out. Figure it out. Figure it out, bud. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. The the reunion special was better. The part two was definitely better. It was more entertaining. Um, The way that they interacted was a lot better in terms of having the people tell the story instead of Vern asking questions to them and making it more long winded. Uh, Having it edited together made it more entertaining overall. Nani losing her veneer was pretty funny. But again, Nani is, you know, as talking about someone who can't handle their liquor and consistently getting blackout drunk all season long. Right. At least Nani, for the most part, is a fun drunk. Right? And also, Nani is like a foot shorter than Josh and probably gives up 120 pounds to him. Like, Josh might literally be twice her weight. Yeah. So, like, oh, yeah. I'm a little more understanding if Nani had four drinks and was, like, messed up. Like, I get, like, okay, sure. <laughs> like, I get that. Yeah. It um, was weird. It was a weird, weird, weird flex. I also, uh, I like just the closing thoughts that they had. Anissa demanding more credit next time. <laughs> uh, Wes and Bananas reflecting on their new friendship. Mm-hmm. Jenny apologizing to all of her roommates for being a sleep talker. <laughs> and Jenna making the interesting point that if it wasn't for all the drama back home, that she and the other members of the Holy Trinity would have done better. Which Do you buy might that? Might be the case. Do you buy that? Uh, I think so. I think it affected their game. I think it affected them. Even though Jenna, you know, there was that period where we didn't know if Jenna was going to stay or go, and like mm-hmm. it was a distraction to her, to her friends. Yeah. You know. Uh, no, I definitely agree with you there. I just think that would they have been better than Bailey? Not Bailey. Well, yeah, Bailey made it to the final, but uh, I was going to say Casey. And or Jenny, and I don't know. I don't know but it would have been that. interesting. Would, would have been, been interesting, interesting for sure. Because like Kayla and Jenna in particular, that was really an endurance heavy final, mm-hmm. and they're both quite Jenna especially is very good at endurance competitions. Yeah. So who's to say? True. Very Although, true. I mean, they also would have been tripped up by the math. So. Who knows? Yeah. Um, who was was there an MVP of this episode? And if so, who was it for you, Sheldon? Who killed it this week? I mean, I'd probably say Melissa. Melissa yeah. was doing work. Yeah. Right? Melissa was doing work. Um, yeah. I guess so. I would say How about you definitely it. not Josh? Definitely not Josh. You killed it for getting through all your computer and hardware issues i appreciate that and i would like to take this opportunity because i didn't say it at the beginning but appreciate all the people that message to be like hey where's the pod or we're worried about where's the pod or if there was going to be a pod we appreciate you you all of you that listen to this podcast and really let me know if you know you guys were cool with me elaborating on that long ass story because sometimes i think like oh people don't want to they don't care about how shit gets done they just want the end process but i'm a little like loopy right now (laughs) and the reason is after i came back from picking up my laptop i had a nap i legitimately took an hour nap (laughs) before doing this podcast and still woke up and i'm still like ah (laughs) here we are but 
thank you for listening to this because I think this is the very first project done on the new laptop. So hey, very exciting. It's kind of dope. Sorry, I'm kind of hyped because this Blazers uh, Grizzlies game is crazy, and Mello just hit a three to take the lead. Sorry. <laughs> Blazer Girl. Shouts to Blazer Girl, who I know is one of our uh, repeated listeners of the You Killed It pod. Where can the people find you on social media? Oof. You can find me on social media, sports, 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 and more sports, especially the NBA and making fun of baseball because I just want to say I told you so. But, uh, yeah, at Shell Alexander on Twitter and at Sheldon Alexander on Instagram. And shout to the people. Like and subscribe to the feed on iTunes and SoundCloud and Spotify and YouTube. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys so much for rocking with us this season because it was a season unlike any other with yep. us all being in quarantine. I think that led to a lot of new people stumbling into or rediscovering the challenge. And hopefully along the way, you found us that also helped with your challenge experience. So huge shouts to you guys for rocking with us because it was a fun season. All in all, all things considered, so much happened in this season of the challenge so yeah and Thank you. our first full season of being on youtube yes with, with i didn't even realize that. in previous in previous seasons you could listen to us on youtube and sometimes we'd have video episodes yeah first full season with video i want to thank you sheldon for taking on that project hold on is that what killed my computer <laughs> Sheldon, you <laughs> That's killed amazing. it. That's <laughs> amazing. Yes, I love it. No, it was perfect timing though because we needed the we. I needed to get a new MacBook, and if I didn't, if it literally didn't just die, then I wouldn't have gotten a new MacBook. So there you go. Hey, the videos were great. I also want to thank our listeners. I want to thank you, Sheldon. I think we had some really great and important conversations on this podcast, which I'm always very proud of. And uh, if people want to get at me on either Twitter or Instagram, it's at J. Chidley Hill. And until I guess next season, mm -hmm. I do want to say happy birthday to you, Sheldon. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Happy Simcoe Day. <laughs> yes. Happy what should have been Carabana. Yes. And happy what should have been OVO Fest. True. And happy what should have been Veld Festival. Mm -hmm. And who knows when the challenge is going to return. But until then, we will be You Killed It. You Killed It.